Some big news today. Russia has launched its full-scale assault into Ukraine with uh, missile strikes and helicopter assaults being reported and explosions being felt in several major cities. I don't have a lot to offer as far as opinions go on this one because I'm more concerned with the state of civilization uh, in North America particularly and in Canada especially and uh, more so than I am with uh, the affairs of a foreign country. I'll leave it to other people to argue about whether that's our fight or not. Uh, I just have to let you know what's going on in the world but uh, today I'll be providing you with some news a little closer to home such as what's going on with the Freedom Convoy as some of you may have heard it's basically been uh, removed the main blockade in Ottawa has been broken up the trucks have been towed away or impounded and the protesters have been cleared and out cleared out enough to the extent that businesses in the area are beginning to reopen and the highest figures that I've seen as far as arrests are 191 and 76 vehicles have been reported as towed away. The police have tightened in their red zone around the area and have taken down some of the more than 100 checkpoints that were put in place over last weekend. Uh, and here is a montage of the methods that they used to remove these peaceful protesters who committed the grave offense of standing in the street and honking their horns. Check it out. And here you can see as the horses rode through the crowds earlier this week, uh, you can see a horse actively stepping on one man. And just below, you can see a woman on a mobility scooter who has been knocked to the ground. And uh, the horse trampled over her, breaking her clavicle. There had been reports of her death, but it has since been confirmed that she is still alive and well. And the Ottawa police had tried to cover up this incident by claiming that a bicycle was thrown at the feet of the horses, uh, which was their attempt to explain away the mobility scooter. The explanation was later redacted and we can never let them forget this. Remember all the while. Person here uh, in Louisville, Kentucky, Quintez Brown, a BLM supporter, entered the office of mayoral candidate Craig Greenberg last week and attempted to assassinate him, firing four shots, one of which passed through Greenberg's clothing. So the only saving grace was that Brown is a terrible shot, apparently. And two days later, a local BLM chapter crowdfunded his bond of $100,000 and had him released from prison and placed under house arrest. And I find this interesting. So an attempted assassin is allowed out two days later on a $100,000 bail, but somebody who stood in the middle of the street and counseled people to park their trucks and stand up against the government in a peaceful and respectful way is not allowed out on bail. Like this, Quintus Brown is a flight risk. He is a violent felon at this point. Why is he in his own home? And why is Tamara Lich still in jail? This is a discrepancy and it's obviously due to the double standard. If you support a cause that they support, they'll go easy on you, they'll let you out of jail. They'll basically give you whatever concessions you want. If you are going against the grain, against the narrative, 
there is no mercy for you and you are a threat to the democracy very interesting and we have to hold them to it we can't let people forget about this uh, thankfully we have had a small victory this week uh, yesterday afternoon Prime Minister Trudeau announced that after careful consideration he is ready to say that the emergency is over and he will be revoking his use of the Emergencies Act. Here's a clip. We were very clear that the use of the Emergencies Act would be limited in time. And today, after careful consideration, we're ready to confirm that the situation is no longer an emergency. Therefore, the federal government will be ending the use of the Emergencies Act. We are confident that existing laws and bylaws are now sufficient to keep people safe. So there's been some speculation about exactly what happened between the House vote on Monday night and Wednesday afternoon. Uh, but my theory is that he just saw that the Senate was going to shoot it down and to save face rather than having his plan cancelled by another branch of the government. He wanted to make himself look like the good guy and like he was being reasonable and pulled it down himself before other people did it for him. And this makes him no less of a tyrant, but it does bring us a half step back from the brink of the cliff of martial law, which we were facing last week. And now we need to make sure that such abuses of power don't happen again. And the next, at the very next available opportunity, we need to elect a capable and competent prime minister, Pierre Poliev. And uh, the only way that any of this ends is if the people refuse to comply. And that's what we see happening across the country and all across the world. This thing has spread to multiple countries, spreading like wildfire. The convoy may be broken up in Ottawa, maybe. Maybe they're still around there somewhere. But uh, they provided a spark for some very dry kindling everywhere else. Local protests are popping up everywhere. And it really is a better approach because they can't crush us all if we're spread all over the place in every community across Canada and across all these different countries. And what they've done is they've made people realize it's time for this thing to be over and people want it now and there's no stopping it. You're not going to hold back the tide. And there's always a lingering possibility that the convoy could reemerge. There's reports. They know what they're doing. They have eyes on the ground. They're not all gone. They're just lying low around in places where the police can't touch them. And they'll know when they can come back. And I really hope they do. There's no tactic quite as effective as just always being there persistently, not even with huge force, maybe not causing huge hits against your enemy, but always picking at them, always being on the fringe, make, keep them on their toes, and don't let them rest. Uh, here's some kind of good coronavirus news. The Quebec schools will no longer be requiring the students to wear masks in class after they return from March break, which the date varies for school districts. So some will be the second week of March, some will be the third. Uh, however, they will have to wear the mask between classrooms and on school buses until further notice. And this is the thing that annoys me about the lifting of COVID restrictions in phases. Because if you can agree that it's not necessary in classrooms, why should it be necessary anywhere else? And nobody come talk to me and tell me that this is science-based. This is completely arbitrary and decided by the people at the school district levels, whatever their whims are and whatever they feel that day, that's what the regulations are. And this news is progress, but the best approach is if you're going to lift the restrictions in any area, lift them all at once. This is not about science. It's time for this thing to be over. Time to move on. And finally, I want to cover a story coming out of the UK. This is from Breitbart. The health officials in England have warned that there is an impending second pandemic of millions of children and adults suffering from mental health issues exacerbated by the imposition of lockdowns during the Chinese coronavirus crisis. The article states that almost 10 million people, including 1.5 million children, are waiting in line for mental health care for issues such as psychosis, depression, anxiety, and eating disorders. And in a group this size, there's obviously some people who have self-diagnosed and don't actually have these conditions or are interpreting regular human feelings and emotions as a mental disorder, which is another problem, another issue for another time. But also in a group that size, there has to be some real cases. And I, I fully believe it, given what we've seen in the last two years. When you lock people in their houses uh, and provide them with an endless daily stream of fear-mongering and panic-inducing statistics through social media and 
corporate media and conflicting reports from medical experts that seem to change almost by the day, sometimes by the hour, uh, you can see how that could lead to some depression and anxiety. And when the people are at home with nothing to do, one of the basic human responses is to fill downtime with eating, so they're for uh, eating disorders. And another mental health issue that is arising in the aftermath of the pandemic response is suicide and self-harm, which we've warned about this. We said this was coming. A report from this time last year showed that preteens are harming themselves at double the rate of that in 2015. That is astonishing. And uh, British universities found that almost five times as many children committed suicide as died of the coronavirus in England or in the UK in 2020. And I and many people I respect have said this almost from the very beginning. When the lockdowns began to drag out and we realized it's no longer two weeks to slow the spread, this thing is here for the long haul. Uh, we predicted the virus is going to be the least of our worries. You haven't seen the real pandemic yet. The mental health effects are devastating and we're never going to see the full extent. We're not going to know because we'll have no control group to compare this to. And the world's leaders have pitted the people against one another and force them into doing things that are at the very least unhelpful and quite likely very damaging to mental health. And now the bill comes due. The coronavirus was never the real pandemic. In the quest to save human life, we have caused immeasurable and quite likely irreparable damage to the human spirit, which will take possibly a generation or more to recover and get back to some semblance of regular mental health status. And I pray for everyone in the UK and undoubtedly around the world who is still fighting the effects of this pandemic and its accompanying lifestyle disruptions. And I hope we realize what's happening so we could head it off early at the pass and we can ensure that it never happens again. That's all for today. Don't forget to subscribe, smash like, hit the bell, and join me right here again next week.